Halo pemirsa CNBC Indonesia, ketemu lagi bersama saya Syafi Nasnasyiat. Berjalan sudah 3 tahun ada di Indonesia, namun perusahaan ini sudah establish sejak 8 tahun lalu. Kira-kira bagaimana ya perjalanannya selama 3 tahun di Indonesia bahkan tahun lalu sempat melantai dan sudah melantai di Bursa Efek Indonesia. Langsung saja kita datengin kantor Fantony untuk bertemu founder dan juga CEO dari Fantony yaitu Jun Waidin. Hi Jun, how are you? Good, how are you? Nice to see you again. Nice to see you again. Okay, can we uh, discuss in where? Do you think? Do you have any? Let's go in the office. Okay, yeah. let's go inside. Let's go. Wow, there's a lot of people now in your yeah, office. Know, right? Yes, absolutely. Is it uh, you are hiring more people now? Oh. Yeah, I think uh, back then when I saw you last time, it was like around 60 people. Uh-uh. Now we have more than 100. More than 100. Yeah. It means you um, hire more than 50, uh, 40 people. Yeah. Wow, in six months. In six months, yes. In six months, it's yes. a huge number. Yes. Okay, let's talk about our business. Mm-hmm. It's been three years about Fantony in Indonesia. Mm-hmm. There must be a lot of successful thing that mm. you do, mm-hmm. but there must be also a mistake. Mm. What can you learn from the past three years? Yeah, for the six, three years, of course, when we came here, we were nobody. Mm. We just, I just came here just by myself. But uh, now, it's just like a lot of the efforts actually came true, and a lot of people understood, and we were able to deliver the satisfactions. Mm. So with that, now we have so many demand, and some thankfully. And now in order for us to have the higher expectation, we need the people to work with. So it was very blessed to recruit and also have the good talents over here in the office to actually work with. So now we are more than happy to just uh, accelerate our business faster and also the better for us to just uh, meet with the more higher demands. So we are actually looking forward to that. If you can mention one thing, <laughs> what is the difference between the first time Fantony established in mm-hmm. Indonesia and then after three years mm-hmm. has been established in Indonesia? Mm-hmm. It's definitely the difference is huge because mm-hmm. back then nobody was able to aware, nobody mm-hmm. heard, nobody yeah. see, nobody felt our service. They don't even understand your business. Exactly. Um, Terry. Exactly, and this business is uncomparable because mm-hmm. our concept is very new. Mm. So that's why they need to think, they need to hear, they need to understand more before they are going to make any decisions. Mm. So it took us a long time for us to actually uh, uh, give a good explanation to the people and the partnership that we are actually meeting with. Mm. So. Everything started from there. Mm. So definitely, the journey was itself was not easy. Mm. If you got a chance to change something mm. in the last three years, what would it be? I think I, we couldn't do any better. So I think. So whatever, you're not gonna change anything. No, we are very thankful, and there's nothing to regret from to where we are right, right now. Thankfully for the, our teams, and thankfully for our people that we are working with. Mm. I think. I would do the same thing if I was here three years ago. Okay. Mm-hmm. Could you share us your challenge the past three years and how you overcome that? Mm. So the challenge was everywhere. Mm. And I think for us to just start a new business, I think the challenge is something you have to accept. And the key part is how you are going to overcome with the challenges. So in terms of the challenges I mentioned to you, We have to bring a new concept, a new business to the country that they never heard or they were seen before. It sounds like there is a big business potential, but at the same time, it takes a lot of the efforts mm-hmm. for us to introduce our service to the market. So that was one of the major challenges that yeah. I was able to And it's counter. interesting that your business growing mm. in in the middle of pandemic. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. What are you doing at that time? I know because again back then as a new company, we had nothing to lose. Mm-hmm. So while the people and also the market was a little mm-hmm. bit conservative, mm-hmm. we had to actually push our service further. So we took the risk and then actually we decided to just go keep moving on. Mm-hmm. And that actually gave us a lot of benefit in return. So mm-hmm. it worked out. As an can we just walk a bit sure. there? Mm-hmm. As a company hmm. w- uh, that work on employee happiness, hmm. do you have any other problem that you want to solve in the future yeah. in terms of employee? So uh, right now, there's still the working environment in Southeast Asia. Hmm. It's not 
maturity yet, meaning it's under the development curve. Mm -hmm. So uh, right now, what we would like to just do it is actually we want to accelerate the work in the environment to be better, and we are going to bring the better environment for the employees. So they are going to be more happier, encouraged, motivated, mm -hmm. and more sophisticated, which can contribute to the company later, right? So mm -hmm. we want to create a good ecosystem for us to just empower the company and also the employees oh. at the same time. Can you explain to me mm. where is the idea of employee happiness came from? Do you feel about that yourself? Or? Yes. So when I was actually working in uh, other countries, I felt that you know the satisfactions or the you know understanding of our business at the same time, I have to maintain the work and life balance very mm. well. And I saw that in our company that I used to work for was able to provide us a good benefits. And that actually keep us motivated, keep in touch. I feel like I feel belonging to this company. So I think this is a feel that is very important to make the company to be happier and more encouraged. Mm. So we would like to bring that concept to the Southeast Asia. So mm. that's actually what we're doing. Because what is the problem do you see in Southeast Asia? Oh, still in terms of the work and the environment, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> still, it's on the development curve. We just actually we were able to see that you know everything was not there yet, maybe partially, but I think it's still everything was not just provided fully. So instead, we would like to just bring everything on behalf of the company for free, mm -hmm. because usually the companies are very difficult for them to actually build everything by themselves yep. in terms of the working environment. Take times, costly sometimes. They have to assign new people. And it's very difficult for them to actually consider that one, especially for the small and the medium enterprise. Mm -hmm. So what we are doing is instead of them just to, you know making any efforts, we are the one actually providing everything on behalf of the company, mm -hmm. and which actually is very effective for the company as well. Mm -hmm. They can actually be do a maybe better recruitment, better hiring, and the company and the employees are going to be very happy mm -hmm. by providing a good environment. How mm. many clients do you have now? Right now, we are almost 500. 500? Yes. The first time you came, uh, the Fantasy established, it's just... When we just came in, it was zero. Yeah, of yeah course. exactly. <laughs> it's just zero, and then now it's 500. Yes. What are they talking about, Fantasy? Oh, definitely. What is their um, feedback? To yeah, Anthony? I mean, the feedback itself is actually very positive, meaning uh, this is something new that they never seen before. And this is a new way of defining the concept of the new work and environment at the same time. The company has been willing to do that, but for the decades, but I think is they couldn't do it by themselves. Mm -hmm. So definitely, this is one of the solutions that mm -hmm. we're providing, and the company feels it better now. Mm -hmm. So I'm very happy to hear that one. Five hundred company is it from uh, different sectors or just the same sectors uh, to each? It's different sectors. So different we are sectors. not really picking on the many specific industries. Mm -hmm. So we are more than happy to welcome the companies who are actually interested in this service. Mm. Okay. Yeah. You keep mentioning that your business uh, model is not really well known, mm. it's quite new. Yeah. And then how you make your business or your company become recognized by people? Yeah, so it was definitely one of... Oh, yeah. Sure, please, please. So it was definitely one of our challenges, right? Because again, we are not bringing something they're familiar with. Oh. So it was actually not easy for us to just... Uh, we had to actually think really well how we are going to be accepted by the market. And uh, the pace of the integrate, I mean, introducing new service was definitely not as fast as the other mm -hmm. services. But uh, definitely there was a need, there's a demand for our service. So we were actually doing our daily efforts to do as much as we can. And at some point, we were also thinking that the, how we can actually accelerate the pace of the recognition of the service. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the goal was, what about IPO? Oh. How about our company to be listed? So with that, our company can be more trustworthy, mm -hmm. and then people can be more familiar, mm -hmm. and maybe create more awareness. And mm -hmm. that was actually our one of the approaches. Yeah, it's a very brave step to do IPO, but your company is just three years in Indonesia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, is there any challenge? Of course, I mean, listing in a company in the three years in operation is not usual, right? Mm. And definitely it's just the idea of listening is not as easy as people think. Mm. Definitely it was so much of the considerations, so much of the time that we had to put the efforts. But uh, definitely like, our team actually did our best and they made it to that far. 
So again, we had to juggle a lot of things at the same time, but we were able to manage it. Mm. Mm. Uh, what are you going to do with the money that you get from IPO? Definitely. So again, with that, we would like to create more awareness, maybe the marketing. And also, we need to actually have more good talents and people. And we need to also improve our services. Mm. Maybe we might have to invest some of the certain new services too. So again, a lot of things to do and we have so much of a list to do. So now, one by one, we are going to do our efforts. Also for your expansion. It mm -hmm. should be for your expansion, Definitely. right? Definitely. Because again, as you mentioned, we need to actually deliver the service to the rest of the country of Indonesia. Mm. For us to do that, definitely we need some sort of, uh, you know, the finance or accounting to be healthier. Mm. So I think the IPO made a lot of sense for us. Okay. Mm. Go back to what I said before. Mm. You must make a lot of um, mistakes in the past two years. Yeah, yeah. Um, what can you fix from that mistakes and you're not gonna do that in the future? Yeah, I mean the mistake is something mistakes are something you have to take. And you are not, I mean, the key is you are not going to end up by making the mistake, mm. but the, what you can learn from that mistakes, mm. right? So as long as you can learn, then you are going to actually make it and you are going to start thinking, how can we better? How can we avoid the same mistake? So actually, that's how we become smarter and wiser and then be more knowledgeable. Mm. So I guess in terms of the making the mistakes, definitely we have to have mistakes. Okay. So, yeah. um, do you have any plan to move to new offices? Because you know you have a lot of employees right now. <laughs> yes, I know. So now when you were able to come to our office last time, we are still have a civil like empty seats, yeah. but now almost fully booked and yes. fully seated by the people. So now definitely we have more than happy to consider about the bigger office and also we have to think about the other offices outside from Jakarta offices. Okay, yeah. let's discuss more in uh, the, uh, the next segment. Sure. Jadi pemirsa memang tadi ya udah dijelaskan selama tiga tahun ke belakang banyak sekali progres yang sudah dilakukan salah satunya adalah peningkatan jumlah pekerja dari Ventany itu sendiri dan juga melantai di Bursa Efek Indonesia. Saya akan tanya lebih jauh lagi mengenai bagaimana perjalanannya perjalanan dari Ventany sejak delapan tahun ke belakang dan apa aja yang akan dilakukan oleh Ventany ke depannya. Tetap bersama saya Shafina Nasir di CNBC Indonesia. Let's go sir, take you that way.